everybody, and welcome to Legends Look Back, proudly part of the Utini Podcast Network. It's a Star Wars books podcast for people who wear Ren and Stimpy pajamas, where we talk about all things legends, celebrating our rich EU history, as well as diving into lesser-known Star Wars classics. I'm your host, Jared Mays, and today I'm joined by my good friend, Freddie C., who just woke up but had his protocol droid make him a steaming hot cup of calf. What's up, Freddie? I'm good, and uh, yeah, I... I woke up not too long ago maybe about 40 minutes ago so it's gonna be fantastic <laughs> oh my gosh so good so great oh man well it's fun to see you even though we were just just talking to each other you know two days ago on thursday yeah. night but if you're watching this live that doesn't matter to you because here you are you're watching it. it's time for the show and also we've got something really fun for this episode that is going to be a surprise to us our good buddy trevor from across the pond is going to be recording some segments for us to throw in here in the edit because we have to have his expertise in this episode here's the fun thing freddie neither you nor i know what he's going to say and <laughs> we're going to be finding out and reacting for the first time <laughs> on uh, thursday as we watch the show live with everybody else looking forward to that and thank you trev for chipping in this episode, of course, is about, uh, you know, the only person who's no good to us dead. Well, or maybe it's the other people who are no good to us dead. It's been Han a long Solo. time coming. What's that? Han Solo's no good to us dead. <laughs> Solo's no good to us dead. We're talking about the legendary history of Boba Fett. This time, no disintegrations. All right. From his introduction in the animated segment and holiday special, which was recently re-released on Disney+, Plus, to his resurrection in Dark Empire to his impersonation by Johto Cast in his redemption arc in, in Legacy of the Force. Man, Boba's made his rounds in Legends, hasn't he? Oh, my we are, <laughs> We are here to break it all down. Plus, he is back now in the spotlight with his reappearance in The Mandalorian, his very own live-action show debuting this fall. Man, it's the year of Boba Fett, isn't it? And he's got his very own crossover event in War of the Bounty Hunters. Just had 40 Boba Fett variant cover issues. Did you pick up any of these, Freddy? I did. I did. Hunters? Yeah, I, I picked up a good amount. Uh, I'm not going to say how many. <laughs> I didn't get any because I've been collecting the um, High Republic number ones. Oh, okay. And that's gotten out of hand. Uh, I think I just picked <laughs> up my tenth this week. They just they just got the fifth printing, the High Republic number one. And uh, this guy was like, at the comic book store, he's like, I feel like every time we get new High Republic number ones, you're here when the door opens. <laughs> And I'm like, you are correct, good sir. That is me. Here I am. Um, well, I can't wait for you to show off in the Discord which, uh, which ones you got. I'm interested. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be exciting. I'll take some pictures. Uh, and everyone should see them by Thursday when this show goes up. So, Excellent. Yeah, I, I was tempted. I might have ordered one. Might have ordered several. I don't remember. That's like a fun game I play with my future self is <laughs> I'll order things and then instantly forget about them so that it's not on purpose either but then when uh, when a package arrives i'm always like mm, what's this gonna be and then if it's like art supplies for my wife's business or something i'm always like oh it's not star wars <laughs> but it's fine it's fine you know what else is fine we've got some uh, recent acquisitions we want to show off i just showed off high republic number one the fifth printing which i think is my 10th copy of this i don't have them all but i've got a bunch i've got a couple of other things that i they're not new since thursday I just forgot to show them off on Thursday. So it's good to have a redo two days later. Uh, before I do, how about you, Freddie? You got any new ones? It's not been I do. long since we last talked. <laughs> yeah. I, I was uh, sitting in the airport thinking, okay, I, I don't have anything to show for this episode. But I did complete my comic book, uh, Legends comic book collection. So what? it's all digital, unfortunately. Oh, 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 yeah. it's, it's not physical. But I, I finally have every single Legends comic book. Just sitting in the palm of my hand. Everybody How great is that? Freddie, a virtual round of applause. Here's the thing, Freddie. I thought I did in the, okay. the, the May the 4th sale last week, but it was like admittedly tough to navigate because there were some books that you could buy for 99 cents or $1.99 as a trade paperback digitally, five or six issues. But then they could also have that exact five or six issues collected in a Dark Horse omnibus that uh -huh. had, it was the same price, 99 cents, $1.99 with way more issues and that happened to me a couple times where i like accidentally purchased this thing, the same thing twice it's like <laughs> only a buck or two so not a big deal but yeah that really adds up and so i was doing research this episode and realized i went to read just kicking my feet back up in in the my camping chair my kids played in the yard so i'm gonna read boba fett and the ship of fear while uh my kids play got like 
you know, an hour here. It's probably just the right amount of time. Not got a few issues. It's not on there. I didn't get it. Where is it? Why don't I have it? What happened, Freddie? <sighs> it's okay. One of these <laughs> days, there'll be another sale, and then I'll finally complete the collection. Well, I've got another trade paperback that is actually physical, not digital. I was in a comic book store the other day, saw this, and was like, I feel like I need it. It just looks gorgeous. And that is the uh, Forever Crimson oh, man. Uh, trade paperback that was just what, – what year is it, Freddie? Forever tell Crimson. Our all right, no, tell, tell our listeners who are listening in the future what year we're recording this episode. <laughs> so currently the year is uh, 2021, if I got that correctly. What happened to 2020? We, we won't what? speak of that year. <laughs> uh, it doesn't exist. does not exist. Um, how about uh, when did Legends books stop being written? I believe that was 2015, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, 2014. 2014, okay. It was, right. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. close enough. Yeah, now, <laughs> here's a crazy thing. There's an issue in this, in Forever Crimson, that is a legend story. I don't think we've talked about this on the show. That was first published in 2019, it says. 2019, Star Wars 108 was the continuation of the mainline, uh, original, old school Marvel comic. And they wanted to bridge the gap with Valence's origin story. He had a mm. few appearances in the, the old Marvel run. They wanted to bring him back in in the, the current canon comics and so they're like here we go one last ride for valence say so they kind of under the radar published another legend story in 2019 isn't that wild that is wild the fact that legends just permeates even till now is is just proof that uh i don't know legends is here forever there's also a, a, a green rabbit in here that i know that uh, joxy's gonna love so excited about this it collects let's see what issues does this say Normally they tell us, all right, Star Wars, um, the original Marvel comic from 1977, collecting issues, and this is so random. Listen to this. 16, 27, 29, 50, and 108. Clearly. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> but this has got to be the most gorgeous cover. Uh, man, yeah, that orange. You got Vader dueling Valence. And uh, we are actually planning a Valence Spotlight episode for Legends Look Back. You want to know who he is? What's his whole deal? Hey, I don't know. I only know his canon stuff, unfortunately. So I want to go back and find out what he was doing in Legends, and uh, I can't wait. Why is he dueling with Darth Vader? I'm so excited. So excited. Well, in terms of Thracken's Thrift Store, that's what we've got this week. However, there's a couple things on the horizon. It's time for Legends Lookout. Freddie, in Bounty Hunters number 12, I just told you I've been reading the canon Bounty Hunters comics. It's got Valence in there. Getting ready for War of the Bounty Hunters. Have to. Have to. This looks really fun, the way it ties in, kind of parallels yeah. shadows of the empire from back in the day which we're getting ready for there's this big fuss in the fandom did you see this ready i, I, I got, did uh, it i've got some funkos back here i've got all oh. the original got all the original bounty hunters from the empire strikes back and i want to know how do you pronounce zuckus's what boyfriend partner what's Def <laughs> his droid yeah. partner? i mean whatever whatever they're they are to each other they're uh i i <laughs> i know that this is a thing and I know that everybody has been trying to figure out, you know, the best way to say this or the right way to say this. Yeah. I've always said Forlom, but I know that yeah. there's a LO. Everyone's trying to go with this LOM deal. No, you're right, Freddie. Real yeah. fans. No, we don't play the real <laughs> fan game around here. Freddie and I personally, as well as several other friends of ours, have pronounced his name as Forlom. Now, which one is Zuckus and which one is Forlom? I'm such a fake fan. I don't know. Forlom, Forlom is the, the droid. They both look like... <laughs> one's an okay. insect and one's a droid. <laughs> sure. But they, their heads look nearly yeah. identical. <laughs> I actually think I wrote like a Zuckus and Forlom article for Utini at one point and I've already forgotten. But yeah, in the story, they, they spelled out his name phonetically. For L-O-M. E-L-O-E-M-M. -E -M. Oh, and boy, was I in a rage fit all day. Yeah. And <laughs> actually, I mean, I, I roll with punches on stuff like this. It doesn't bother me. But it was fun to freak out with other people who were freaking out. And I love Zuckus and Forlom. Man, I love them so much. It was just announced this week, Daniel Jose Older is going to be writing his first Marvel comic, his first Star Wars Marvel comic. He's writing the Zuckus and Forlom special for War of nice. the Bounty Hunters. For LOM, I can't do it, Freddie. I can't do it. Nope. Man. Never will. Never will. Sorry. <laughs> so let us know, everybody. How do you pronounce Zuckus's uh, bro? His droid? 
You see, you see he's a droid? He's a droid? They, but their heads are identical. I hate this. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Star Wars, what are you doing to me? And one other fun thing on Legends Lookout that I want to put on people's radar, um, our buddy, friend of the show, friend of Utini, Kevin Scott, we haven't had him on our show yet. One of these days, one of these days. Um, Kevin posted on Twitter the other day, he's been rereading the original Thrawn trilogy. And when I'm on Twitter and I see a Star Wars author that I love, posting about one of my favorite star wars books i mean it's just like it's a good day you know what i mean yeah yeah definitely very exciting very exciting um so kevin is rereading the thrawn trilogy he was talking about how uh, it starts building the world building is so excellent so foundational uh different style but such a fun ride um would really love to hear more of his takes on that if you want more of what kevin has to say on air to the empire check him out over there on the socials our, didn't we give an award for like uh, being good at social media? Did our uh, Oscars? I, I, I'm terrible at social media, so definitely <laughs> not to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure he won an award. So good job. I imagine there's another award in your future, especially if you keep talking about Legends books. But now, Freddie, this episode, as we get to talking about Boba Fett here. Boba Fett. I can't keep doing that joke every time I say his name. It's going to be a yeah, long episode. Where? <laughs> I want to know, Freddie, he's, he's your favorite character, right? Why do you personally love Boba Fett? Yeah, yeah, this is, this is a big question. This is uh, like asking what's the meaning of life to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Boba Fett, the first time I laid eyes on Boba Fett back in 1997 in the special editions, uh, he showed up right in the, uh, right in the scene when, when Han is trying to get onto uh, the uh, Millennium no, Falcon. No, Freddie, don't. <laughs> Yeah, that that was that was the first time I ever saw him. I I did not see him in the 1978 holiday special until much later. <laughs> Somewhere Joe Johnston is cringing as you talk about <laughs> his character originating in special edition. <laughs> yeah. So so the first time I saw him, I I remember asking my parents as if they would know. I was like, "Who is that? <laughs> Who is that guy in the background?" We don't know, nerd. <laughs> Get out of here, nerd. <laughs> uh, and and I, I just, there was something about the way he looked that just captured my attention. And yeah. of course, you know, I saw Empire Strikes Back and then uh, uh, I almost said Re- Revenge of the Jedi, uh, Return of the Jedi. That's what my poster says. <laughs> oh, yeah. Checks out. <laughs> Checks out. So, and I just tried thinking, you know, as I saw the show notes, why did I like Boba Fett? And I, I, I wrote down some notes here. And I think mainly Uh-oh. because I, I, I got notes, y'all. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you can see them. I've got a. These are my Boba Fett notes. <laughs> Amazing. Let's frame them. Yeah, in a helmet. So, back in the day, right, Boba Fett had five lines, and that's all he needed to capture. I mean, he. It's not just me. It's it's a lot of people. A lot of people just love Boba Fett, and and, and the fact that he is this gunslinger, Western gunslinger. And they, uh, you know, the sound guys made sure they put in spurs when he was walking. The sounds of spurs. Yeah, right. So Even though he doesn't have spurs on his boots. He doesn't have spurs. He doesn't need them. <laughs> he doesn't need them. He probably could just play it through his, his armor as he's walking. What Why if not? he's just making the sound effect with his mouth every time he walks? <laughs> ching! Ching! <laughs> no one would be able to tell, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. So he, he reminds me of this samurai slash gunslinger who who always who who are in my opinion my favorite characters in a lot of of movies right you've got clint eastwood uh of course you've got like kurosawa where a lot of a lot of the the theme came from in my opinion and he he is just this mysterious person with five lines that just captures your attention and you know when when vader says no disintegrations it's it's almost like boba fett just is like ah fine i guess Right. And, and it's like the, the, the fact that this guy, ha, ha, Vader, has to tell this guy no disintegrations. And you're just like, who is this guy? <laughs> like, what, what's his what story? Did he disintegrate? That's one of my <laughs> yeah. favorite like storytelling tropes with Boba Fett is all the things he disintegrates yeah. because people are always like, well, what does he disintegrate? It's, so, yeah. you know, for example, in uh, Mandalorian, um, he's got like the, the big original holiday special Boba Fett blaster the long rifle with the oh, yeah. fork end and he disintegrates Jawas with it, which is cool. <laughs> yeah. It's obviously a different Mandalorian, but I just love that. Like it's such a great storytelling trope for me. Like 
you know, every Star Wars story has the line, um, uh, I've got a bad feeling about this. And in the same way, every Boba Fett story has that trope. <laughs> Boba Fett disintegrates something. Take a drink. Yeah. Yeah. So ultimately, mystery drives interest. That's where I was trying to go. And he is the most mysterious character. If, if you're just looking at the films for the first time, uh, even <clears throat> some of my friends who are barely watching Star Wars for the first time, they, they immediately you know, messaged me, who is this guy? He looks so cool. And I'm like, see, still going. His interest is still going. So Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And I think that's what happened with Mandalorian too. They're just like, oh, yeah. put somebody in, in Mandalorian armor and instantly there's that mystery of, I've got to know what's under there. What's fun is I was doing some research on this in, in the, kind of the, the old school before Attack of the Clones, right? The Wild West with Boba Fett storytelling. There are some of the original creators thought of him as an alien, right? And so yeah. you can find all this. Just I want to challenge everybody just to go. I don't typically plug this website, but go check out the Wook and look at the legend page, legends so page for Boba Fett. You'll be there the rest of your life. I mean, it is <laughs> yeah. so long. But down I, toward the bottom, there's a behind the scenes section, and it shows some different visual depictions of what he might have looked like under the oh. armor pre Daniel Logan, and. It's so great. I love it. It is. It is. Yeah, that, that article, I, I, I was in the airplane. I was like, oh, I've got a couple hours to spend. I'm going to read this. And I looked at it. I was like, ah, I'm not going to read this. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need like a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I think I'm going to propose a, a hypothesis here. Is Boba Fett the single most visually interesting Star Wars character? To me, Absolutely. Absolutely. And when they, when they brought the uh, clones in to the picture, I'll never forget just looking at them and I'm like, oh, they all look like Boba Fett. This is great. This is going to be fantastic. And personally, I think it's just his visor. There's something so aesthetically pleasing about that T visor. It can't I don't know what it is. to like see your surroundings. Not great periffs in that. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah. In, in my, in my uh, Django Fett helmet that I've got, I... I just remember putting it on for the first time. I was like, this is impossible. Like, how is he this good? <laughs> right. Well, in, yeah. in Karen Travis's, and she loves Mandalorian, she loves Boba Fett, does a lot with character uh, in terms of building out his ethos in Legends. And then, you know, obviously famously left the project because yeah. of some butting heads with Lucasfilm and the new direction they were taking Mandalorians in the Clone Wars. But her way of conceiving of the visor scenario and the peripheral vision problem is that the helmet had sensors that could pick up the full 360 peripheral vision. And then it's all displayed inside your helmet via screens that you can control with like blinks and scrunches of clacks of your teeth. And so you can change cycle through different images. So and if you have so allergies, you probably shouldn't wear the helmet. <laughs> That's so good. Surely they've got like, you know, uh, air filters on there though right yeah yeah definitely. no allergies you take the helmet <laughs> off man you stay away from maple trees this time of year it's <laughs> terrible my car is just yellow i wash it every day right now it's just yellow like a cold play song well I, I gotta admit like i have actually fallen into the camp of of uh, andy gutierrez on the star wars show famously said that Django fett is the better fett she refers to Django as better fett which I love, and, and I actually was on board with that for a while until his reappearance in The Mandalorian, at least within canon, within canon, mm -hmm. which there's not much Boba Fett to go on in canon other than you know Daniel Logan in The Clone Wars. That's about it. Until, of course, he just came back recently and was reintroduced, and they, they brought back uh, Tamura Morrison and everything, and, and, and his reintroduction in season two for me really has salvaged the character yeah. in canon. We're not talking about that can that character today. We're talking about a very different conception of Boba Fett and Legends, and there's wildly different conceptions of him too. But it, what was so interesting was you saw him kick butt outside of the armor, and what they showed was for him, it's not the armor that makes him cool. Yeah. It's actually his his own skills, his own um, you know like brutality <laughs> is no nonsense kind of personality. Um, how'd you think he was handled in Mandalorian? I, I think it was great. I, I liked it. I, 
first of all, the fact that they brought him back is just so nice to finally tell the haters, he is alive. I told you. <laughs> right. Because, uh, you know, that, that's the thing. Everyone's like, nope, he died. He died in the Sarlacc, and here's why he died. And I never accepted it. I always felt like he was alive. And, of course, you know, those people didn't read Legends, it seems. But, uh, yeah, I... I <laughs> and it's funny because even uh, Dengar in one of the comics calls Boba... Uh, Sarlacc food. That's his nickname for Boba. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Deng- Dengar and, and Boba Fett have such a fun bromance in, in <laughs> yeah. Legends, which is cool. Yeah. They're more of a rivalry in canon, but because uh, Dengar is a little derpier in canon. In, in Legends, they are they are such a fun pair because Dengar saves him from the Sarlacc yeah. pit. And we'll talk about that. Now, I do want to ask, why do you think some people dislike Boba Fett? I think, like I said, <sighs> it's been, and I was on this bandwagon for a while, I think it's been trendy to dislike Boba Fett. I know this is hard for you to hear, but reckon with it for a minute. Why do you think yeah. this is? Well, I'm going to try to play devil's advocate on their behalf. They, you know, the, the thing is, he's overrated. He's only got five lines. He doesn't really do much. The, the stuff that we do see of him, he goes straight into the Sarlacc, right? That's, that's how everyone describes it. Yeah, both uh, the and- jetpack and... <laughs> so right in there. And, and, you know, uh, even, even George Lucas had no idea what Boba Fett's, uh, I guess, how popular Boba Fett was going to be. He even, he even had a, uh, an outtake of Boba Fett coming back out of the Sarlacc, but he just said it just didn't fit in the movie. No so he way. Never... I, I think you can yeah. find that. That's cool. Yeah. So, uh, and I see, I see their point of view because he is basically the action that we get from him. There, there's not much of it. And... Uh, and they just think like, why is he? Why is he cool? This guy literally just went right into the into the Sarlacc, right? And and I get that, but uh, you know, what, if you read Legends, to me, if if you read Legends, you understand why this character is so cool. And and obviously, with with uh, it's cool to hate things, right? It's cool yeah, to dislike right. things. And I think that's that's the that's the part is is when something becomes popular, people just have to oppose it. And, you know, that's the prerogative, whatever. That's fine. I like right. Boba Fett. I don't care. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a working hypothesis on the big shift. I think most people who watch the original trilogy, especially if you, like, pre-ordered the Boba Fett toy before Empire Strikes Back because <laughs> he, he was introduced in the holiday special, there was so much hype built up around the character. And then in Empire, he's really cool. He's mysterious. Um, of course, that's before Return of the Jedi. So my, my hypothesis there is the people who love Boba the most loved him, were all in on loving him before they ever saw Return of the Jedi. Then, yes. secondly, I think the people who are most adamantly, who most adamantly oppose Boba Fett and his popularity are the people who grew up with the prequels right alongside the original trilogy or even... Yeah, with more exposure to the prequels and the original trilogy. Because think about this. Here's Boba Fett. Here's your introduction to Boba Fett and Jack of the Clones. Dad, John Wee's here. <laughs> I mean, it's not especially threatening. Is it his first line? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> is it? I'll have to look that up. I think so. But what's cool is Daniel Logan actually has really championed the character in his oh, own yeah. fun way. All the actors who've played Boba Fett have done just a great job in interacting with the fandom i love daniel logan's love for star wars he, he regularly posts about star wars books he loves it he's a really social, cool guy which is fun and then um you actually have like a passing resemblance you look a little cooler you know with the, the facial hair but like you could you know you don't look so can anybody else see this come on help me out doesn't doesn't freddie look a little bit like an adult uh, daniel logan yep you gotten this before <laughs> No, no. I, I've gotten uh, Keanu Reeves once. Uh, that's why I always fan cast him and everything. <laughs> <laughs> so good. But Daniel well, Logan, that's a first. I can, I can see it. We'll, we'll have to put up in the Discord a, a side-by-side of Freddy right. and adult Daniel Logan. We've got to find yeah. one with some facial hair on there. But we are going to talk about all of Boba's incredible, wonderful stories in Legends. And we're going to take a quick break and then we'll be right back with the meat of the show. Hello, Legends Look Back fans. It's Trevor here from the Star Wars Archives. Now, I know today's show has been all about Boba Fett, so Jared asked me to just make a short video, maybe talk about a few of the more obscure books that the guys wouldn't have covered. So, the first book I want to talk about today is The Bounty Hunter. So, this is book two in the Lost Jedi Adventure series. Now, these are choose-your-own-adventure books that were only ever published in the UK. 
And this book sees Boba Fett on the trail of Habit Storm, one of the re rebels that was actually responsible for getting the Death Star plans transmitted off to Prawa back in the old Legends days. It's a really fun little read, aimed at younger readers, of course, but, you know, check it out, try and find it if you can. The next book I want to talk about is actually book 12 of a series, because why not? But we have Galaxy of Fear, The Hunger. Now, the Galaxy of Fear books came out in the 90s. For those who don't know, it's essentially Goosebumps in Star Wars. And everyone knows the Goosebumps series, wildly successful. It's kind of a take on that. Now, this one is particularly weird, though. So, not only is Boba Fett hired by Darth Vader to hunt down the main characters of a series, but they go to Dagobah, they meet Yoda, and more importantly, there's a character in this called Platt O'Keefe, who's a female smuggler that appeared in loads of the old West End games, role-playing games, source books and materials and short stories, but this is her one and only actual appearance in a proper book. So that makes it worth a mention for me anyway. Then the last one I want to talk about, and this one you really, really should hunt down. So it's a short story called Boba Fett, A Practical Man, and it takes place around the beginning of the New Jedi Order series. So it covers the, um, the initial incursion into the galaxy by the Yuuzhan Vong. It's all about Boba Fett trying to help Mandalore rebuild itself and have a relationship with the greater society of the galaxy at large. It's a really cracking short story. I highly recommend everyone checking out. Now, it was originally just published online as an ebook, but it was reprinted in Legacy of the Force Sacrifice, also by Karen Travis, the author of A Practical Man. So those are my obscure picks. I hope you enjoy them. Try and hunt them down if you can. They're all well worth it. Back to you guys. You know what all this is reminding me of, Freddie? So we get to talking about Boba Fett here, is that... Uh... Patton Oswald, um, that that scene from Parks and Rec, from before The Force Awakens came out, and he did like the filibuster. Have you ever seen this? Not the oh, yeah. the Legends looked at yeah, back Discord, yeah. the the extended version, not the one they actually aired in the show. You got to watch the extended version. Of he was Patton Oswald was just going off script. He was just improving, and he came up with this whole plot for what episode seven should be. And he's like, Boba Fett's gauntlet comes up out of the Sarlacc. <laughs> <laughs> then he, he, he's holding Chewbacca's severed head. And <laughs> <laughs> I've just been sitting here trying not to laugh thinking about that the whole episode. But that's unfortunately, that story is never in Legends. But uh, tell the good folks what is. The first category we're going to be talking about tonight is the most important. The Boba Fett story. We're going to talk about the most important Boba Fett story in Legends, the uh, the best Boba Fett story. They're not necessarily the same. We're going to talk about an underrated Boba story, the weirdest Boba story, and the worst Boba story. Bless its heart. All right, you're up, Freddie. Um, <laughs> I can't wait for that one. What you got? So uh, yeah, the most important Boba story to me is Blood Ties, and uh, I'm not sure if you've read Blood Ties, but that's the the series where where Django. And Django is basically training uh, Boba Fett. And you can see uh, it, it starts off with a beautiful image. I think I sent it over to you uh, where he's oh, surrounded. Yeah, yeah, he's surrounded by by a bunch of thugs and, and a crime lord, basically. And there's this a one. rancor. Exactly. And there's a rancor behind him. And uh, I can't read it, but basically he's oh, saying... Oh, I didn't even notice the rancor. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Uh the whole point of it is is he's he's surrounded and everybody there wants to kill him, but he's not afraid. And then it the second page literally jumps to like a flashback of Django Fett training Boba how to use the uh Oh yeah, young Boba, sure. Yeah, exactly. Young Boba, how to use the uh the jetpack, right? And he's like, Are we doing flight practice? And he goes, Not really. Uh, I want you to take a, a tooth from the the most fierce fearsome animal you're ever gonna see in your life. And it, it is it's it's called the Balieg, I believe, yeah. and that Balieg is just incredibly scary. And I can only imagine at his age, what like ten years old or something like that, to take a tooth from that thing. And the whole point of that that training from Django was, if you're ever in a situation where you might feel fear, just remember you faced the the most fearful thing in the galaxy, and it's already behind you, so you'll never have to be afraid again. And that was the whole point of that training. Now, this is 
definitely in contention for me. Yeah, I would definitely put it up there in my top five of the most important Boba Fett stories in, in terms of showing his arc, his development from, yeah. from how do you go from Daniel Logan to, you know, Jeremy Bullock or to yep. Morrison, right? Um, this is really cool. It's written by Tom Taylor, who for my money is one of the best writers in yes. comic books. Yes. He's an Aussie. So uh, shout out to our buddy in uh, Down Under, uh, Adam over there. Uh, but Tom Taylor has not written many Star Wars stories in uh, in comparison to what he's written for, for other media. He's written some Darth Maul. Um, he's written uh, some canon stuff, Age of Resistance. He wrote a ton of X-Men Wolverine stories. Yeah. And is just absolutely one of my favorite Legends authors. Uh, underrated. We need to get a guide up about him on the site, I think. Yeah, I think I think him mixed with Chris, I think his name is Chris Scalf, the artist of of this this comic book series. I mean, if Check you look out. at this Sounds art, right. it's beautiful. It's it's so cool. Yeah, it's different. It is. It's different. It's digital art, actually. Uh, oh, is uh, it really? It, yeah, yeah. You can tell just by a lot of the scenes. Maybe we'll we'll try to pop it up in in our art show coming up. But yeah, it's it's one of my favorites. I think it's the most important because you get to learn about Boba Fett, how he becomes the person he is. And uh, you get to see Jango Fett training him as a, as a father and son, well, father and clone, I guess. Uh, and, and you see the, the the pain in in Boba Fett too when when Jango Fett dies, or you know, and and everything that's happening there. So it's in my opinion, if you want to learn Boba Fett and his backstory and how who he is and what why he is the way he is, you have to read Blood Ties. Yeah, great pick. I, I just downloaded it this morning. I was hoping I could squeeze it in before the show, but my kids had other plans. <laughs> Boy, did they ever. <laughs> uh, I'm hoping to reread it soon. It's so good. So good. That This could actually be in contention for the best as well, not just most important. Um, for me, I'm going to go a different direction. You went um, you went comics, in, in, and it's, it, it's a story that crosses the bridge from prequel Boba to original trilogy Boba. I'm going to go like sequel era Boba. And I'm going to talk mostly about the novels. Obviously, as we showed off earlier, he does first reappear in 1991's Dark Empire. And I love this line in the middle of the page there. He says this. I would say this is the single greatest line in all of Legends, maybe, for me. <laughs> I need to get like a my wife to do a mural of this line. It's so good. The Sarlacc. Let me see if I can do it in a Boba Fett voice. The Sarlacc found me somewhat indigestible solo how was that like at least a six out of ten that was good actually that was really good <laughs> all right i'll take a six don't need a seven um <laughs> this is it's important in the comics but then i'm also going to give a shout out to it's it's in perfect star wars fashion freddie the same story is told different ways <laughs> in yeah. more than one in more than one uh, book so it is in both tales from Jabba's palace there's a story of boba escaping the sarlacc pit see who it's by and what its name is. And then also it's retold in the Mandalorian armor. So it's retold in the bounty hunter wars series, not to be confused with the new Canon comic war of the bounty hunters. Don't they love to recycle titles? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah do. This one is called, Oh, come on. Why do you got to give these books such each one has a title colon the Rancor keepers tale. Um, I think it's Pacers. the bard, right? The bard. Oh, okay. There's like a backside in the contents. No wonder. All right. Haven't found it yet. Uh, bad feeling. Bulbo assassin. Where are you? There it, it is. Might, it might be the towards end. the end. Yeah. A barve like that. The tale of Boba yeah. Fett by J.D. Montgomery. It's. There you go. It's a little difficult. It's a little wordy, <laughs> but it's awesome. Yeah. The way it's it's the story of how he gets out of the guts of the Sarlacc, and it's so brutal and. 90s it's excellent in a weird way um, and then like i said it is also in told with flashbacks to boba's like the main character in the man in, in the bounty hunter wars series he's the most likable character for sure because they're yeah. all despicable yeah. and it's, that that's a very important story for boba fett i would say in legends maybe the most important for my money is um, you know, how he's handled in the Bounty Hunter Wars series. Not that it's the best series, but that it really establishes Boba as having his own code. He's not just going to be yanked around. He's not just a peon for the Bounty Hunters Guild. Um, he's got, he's like an anti-hero in that series, don't you think? I, I think so, yeah. He, he's, uh, 
he definitely is an anti-hero. But if you go back and look at Boba's history, even even in Clone Wars, he is an honorable man, right? And and that's the thing that everybody stresses about uh, Jango. You know, everyone everyone liked. I wouldn't say liked Jango, but they respected him. So when Bo was walking around, they say, I'm, you know, I'm sorry for your loss. He was a very honorable man. Uh, you know, Hondo and Naka says the same thing. So uh, it, I, I'm glad that that, that note kind of carried through from the old legends into the newer legends. So it, it's good to see that. Yeah. And I, I, yeah, I, I definitely love those Because Jango was honorable. Not all the clones are honorable. Some of them are. And you can see that in you know, like the Bad, the Bad Batch, for example. Um, some of them really do have that, that heart of gold. And others, you know, they just kill you. <laughs> okay, uh, next category, Freddie, tell us what we got. Uh, you know what? This one was really tough for me because I would say the best Boba story is the one you have as well. And I, I was having a hard time <laughs> trying to figure out another good one. You can take uh, it and I'll talk no, about No, no, it's one. okay. I, I, I'm going to talk about Enemy of the Empire, which I, I like Enemy of the Empire. I'm not, it's funny, you'll see my, my trend is my favorite Boba stories happen to be comics because you get to see Boba Fett right you get to see his armor you get to see him in action and I think uh, when it came to comic books that's those are the comics I collected so I'm gonna let you take there about the comics though yeah go ahead um in Legends comics there are two characters who receive more space and attention and individual issues than any other character I would say between Darth Vader and Boba Fett (laughs) put those together you've got at least 70% of Legends comics, don't you think? Yeah, that's, uh, that's about right. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's not like a real precise figure, just made it up <laughs> right here, right now, but there are so many Boba Fett comics in Legends. There are, there are. Uh, Enemy of the Empire is both Vader and Boba Fett. And it's, it's actually just before, uh, you know, it's, it's the first encounter of, of Vader and Boba Fett, and Vader is sending Boba Fett on basically a mission where he's going to end up killing him. At least that's what he thinks. And uh, I'm not going to go too far into it because I haven't read all of it yet, but uh, you know, he, he's got this mission from Vader to go get this. I think it's like a coffin of some sort. And Vader sends out like a bunch of scrappy pirates to go deal with Boba Fett. And then the, the pirates are going to come back and then Vader's going to deal with them. Uh, obviously, he doesn't do that. We see Boba Fett later on as one of uh, Vader's favorite uh, bounty hunters. So it's a it's a pretty cool story. I I would say it's not it's it, in terms of best. Uh, yours coming up is probably the best in my opinion. I'm sitting here so, racking my mind on whether or not I've ever read that. I am just not sure. Yeah, I think it's like three BBY. So definitely before before the events of the films. It's tough because so many of the Boba Fett books in comic, so many, some of the Boba Fett comics are just like Boba Fett, colon, something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it's hard. I know I just bought Enemy of the Empire. I know I just okay. bought it for sure because it was like the only one about Boba Fett that I could find that I was getting ready for this episode. And I still didn't get to read it in time. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to diving into it. And I'll let you guys know what I think after I've tackled it. Definitely. Um, so it's my turn. I'm going to talk about the one that it looks Talk about one that it looked like uh, Freddie and I were kind of battling over (laughs) (laughs) is um, later in the timeline. So we've talked about prequel era Boba Fett. We've talked about original trilogy era Boba Fett. I'm going to take us deep into the Legacy of the Force series. So this is toward the end of the Legends timeline. This is the second book in the series, and um, it is Bloodlines by Karen Travis. First of all, one of the best covers yeah. in all of Legends. Um, the the red and green, just doesn't it look like just the perfect stocking stuffer? What a great Christmas <laughs> present. You've got the red and green Boba Fett right there. What's cool is it is basically the story of 70-year-old Boba Fett trying to do good again. And he yeah. has just won the war against the Yuzhan Vong. He helped uh, repel the Vong. And then is is now going back to Mandalore, trying to help lead his people, not as a warrior, but to to just rebuild their society because mm-hmm. Mandalore has been decimated. They need him to be a leader, not in battle, but as a, as a man. And he has to like parent his granddaughter, which is a really interesting dynamic. Uh, eventually, later on in the series, he trains Jaina Solo, 
and teaches her. She basically becomes like a Mandalorian trained Jedi. So she gets like the Beskar gauntlets yeah. that can, so cool. you know, deflect lightsaber uh, slashes. And the, in, in this story, in the end, I think the third act has Han teaming up with Boba Fett to take yep. down Thrak and Sal Solo. I mean, yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's the most legendsy thing ever. But this <laughs> It goes back to what I love the most about a good Boba Fett story is it's not just about him looking cool in the armor. Strip yeah. the armor off. Let's get to who he is as a man. And the story does that really well. And it shows his vulnerability. And of course, Boba Fett may be like the broiest character in all of Legends. Oh, and I sure. think that's one of the criticisms is like he is representative of toxic masculinity to some. And so this story is so cool because he's hanging out with like a teenage girl. And it has to like be a good grandpa. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's his his uh, his granddaughter comes to find him later on, yeah. right? Yeah, right. yeah. Beautiful story. I love. I, I uh, definitely contention for the best, in my opinion. I had a friend, teenager from church, a few years ago, who was getting into Star Wars books. Of course, asked me for some recommendations. Um, several years ago, right after Bloodlines by Claudia Gray had just come out. Now there's a difference. No, bloodline, singular. This is bloodlines, plural. <laughs> I always mess these up. She was asking me for recommendations. I was like, man, bloodline was really good. It was such an excellently told Leia story because we had gone to see The Force Awakens together. I was like, this is it. Seven years for The Force Awakens paves the way for that. She goes to the library and she gets the wrong book. She gets <laughs> bloodlines. Guess what? She freaking loved it because it's an excellent book. It is. It <laughs> so really she, is. She knew nothing of the Yuuzhan Vong War. She didn't read book one, Legacy of the Forest. She just read Bloodlines. I was like, oh, no, you got to read more. She's like, no, I'm good. But, like, this was good. I, was like, I know it is great. This is great. It's great. All right, so next category, Freddy. Yeah, so we've got the underrated Boba story. And I know that this also, I would say that these books also go to some of the worst ones. And I think it's just my opinion. Uh, but underrated is, is definitely... Um, it's Boba Fett Hunted, which is the young reader book by Elizabeth Hand. Now, the young reader books, we'll, we'll talk about those later, but um, Hunted is basically the, the entrance of Jabba, uh, the, the introduction to Jabba and, and Boba Fett, right? Boba Fett knows of Jabba, and Jabba's heard of him, but he doesn't really know who Boba Fett is and needs to get some kind of proof that he is as good as everyone says he is, right? Uh, and in yeah. this in this book, it's Boba Fett versus Dirge. So oh, that's a, right, I forgot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a it's a fun little story, and the whole point is is there's a dangerous uh, bounty, and Jabba sets you know whoever comes back with the bounty or proof of of that bounty, uh, you know gets gets to, you know I'll honor that as as you are the best and you can work for me kind of person, right? Uh, so so of course. Boba Fett and Dirge go out to find this person. Dirge gets a little crazy and, and blows everything up. And all, all Boba Fett does is take a hat <laughs> and proves right then and there. He's like, all right, your job. I've got him. <laughs> so, what does uh, Charles call Dirge? What was Charles saying on the Living Force the other day? That he's made of, is it Play-Doh? Jello? Yeah. Oh, yeah, something like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Silly string? Yeah. I, yeah, you know that's you know we'll talk about Dirge in it maybe later episodes, but I'm so sad that we didn't get to see his uh, more of him, right? But he's uh, back, baby. He's, he's back, back. Canon for yeah. sure. I'm so excited. That's what I'll do. The only variant cover I'll get from War of the Bounty Hunters if you just stick Jello Dirge <laughs> coming Jell apart at the seams. Jell so excited. Dirge. You got right there <laughs> alongside Hot Dog Boba Fett. Jell Hot Dirge. Dog Boba Fett. <laughs> All right, my most underrated Boba Fett story. You just wait, Freddie. I'm actually gonna. I'm going to take yours to task. I, I think that Young Reader Boba Fett series is atrocious. Well, that's <laughs> why I put the rest of them on the other, on the worst Boba Fett. <laughs> that, one, that one actually is probably the strongest in the series, if I remember correctly. Yeah. That sounds right. Yeah, Dirge. You put Dirge in the story, automatically bumps it up a letter grade. Sure. Yeah. Uh, mine is an ebook. It's a novella. It is Boba Fett, A Practical Man by, and this becoming a pattern, I realize, I'm sorry, by Karen Travis again. <laughs> uh, not all of my picks are by Garrett Travis, but uh, this is so cool because Boba was kind of absent for quite a while in Legends storytelling. You know, he comes up out of the Starlight Pit, and then, well, he does the whole Bounty Hunter Wars, but then where'd he go? 
what's interesting is there's actually a retcon. Do you know about this, Freddie? That he is impersonated for a while by Jodo Cast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I need to look up the the exact story where the retcon is established. I know that one of the one of my favorite Boba stories, uh, which is Shards of Alderaan in the New Jedi Knights. Young Jedi Knights, uh, Shards of Alderaan, which is such a cool cover. Look at this sucker, Freddy. So awesome. Yeah. The silver yeah, and purple nice. with Boba in the middle. So excellent. Anyway, in this, it's established that the Boba Fett who captures the Solo twins is actually not Boba Fett. <laughs> <laughs> but So for a long time, he's gone. And here's the retcon. He becomes Mandalore. And this is the story of how Boba steps into the limelight is is not just a random Mandalorian out, you know, uh, performing hits on criminals and crime lords, but he is basically called by, I think his name is Finn Scheisse, this sounds right, who, who his dying wish is that Boba would take up the helm and become Mandalore, capital M Mandalore, the leader of the people. And it's only 100 pages. I actually got uh, the ebook for free just yesterday from my local library. I'm hoping I can sit down and read it. There's a lot to read, Freddie. There's a lot to read. Yeah. And in this, it's it's about how the Mandalorians repel the Yuuzhan Vong, and they do it by enlisting themselves to the Yuuzhan Vong yep. as uh, like you know mercenaries who are going to do bad for, um, going to do all kinds of bad stuff. And uh, when it's all said and done, of course, they are working for the New Republic. They're like sleeper agents. Um, yeah. What what do you call that? Double agents. Double agents. Yeah, yeah. It's a pretty good story, and and I think at the I'm not sure when it's made clear, but Boba Fett decides to work for the Yuuzhan Vong. And I remember at that time, I was like, come on, you can't do that. But of course, it goes back to the old adage, right? Keep your enemies close or closer, I guess, your friends close. So uh, pretty pretty interesting way of how that developed. Honestly, a very, very good and underrated, definitely underrated story. Absolutely. It's excellent. <laughs> Talk to us about the weirdest Boba Fett story. Oh, man. Okay. so We had to go here. <laughs> This is this is probably the most legendsy story that you'll ever hear. All right, so uh, the weirdest Boba Fett story. Uh, it, I'm not even sure where to start with this, but there's it, it's called Bounty on Barcuda, and there's a hut. His name is Gorga the Hut. He's absolutely in love with another hut, and I, I think I sent you a. <laughs> a oh, okay, a, sure. Yeah, I'll pull this. A up. visual of what what he's saying, and he. He's basically like describing this this hut and how beautiful she is, her her nice supple dumpling lips or something like that, and <laughs> and so he's absolutely in love. Turns out that this this hut, her name is a narco or something like that, uh, a nacro. She is is the daughter of Orko, and Orko does not like Gorga. So Gorga's like, how can I win over Orko? And there, he finds out that there's this pirate who just keeps demolishing and, and uh, uh, you know, stealing, stealing a lot of things from Orko. And so he's like, you know what? I'm going to hire Boba Fett to go deal with this Barcuda. Well, <laughs> Boba Fett uses the help of a magician named <laughs> Wet Magwit. And he, he has this like hoop that's basically like a teleporter. And he, he's doing magic tricks with this hoop and he, he coaxes Borkuda, Magwit coaxes Borkuda to go through it. Jabba the Fett, Jabba, Jabba the Fett. Uh, Boba Fett takes, takes Barkuda and basically gives him to the huts and the huts cook him and eat oh him. Oh my gosh, they eat yeah. the other hut? <laughs> they, no, they eat, they eat the, the, the Barkuda guy. The, the, mad, the that, magician. No, no, Magwit's the magician. So here, here's the thing. Let me just summarize crazy, it. Man. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna try to resummarize this. We're gonna have to re-edit this. this is no, no, you're crazier. doing great. You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, here's the story. A hut hires Boba Fett. Boba Fett uses a magician to get access into the ship because this is like this is like basically Black Sun level uh, intensity, right? Uses a magician who's like the size of. He's like three feet tall, probably. He's super short, got a pointy hat. You find him at a circus at the very beginning of, no of the comic book. And he's like, you know what? You used to work for Barcuda. I'm going to use you to get me into that ship. And the whole thing is like this guy literally doing magic tricks. And I feel like most of the panels 
are this guy doing magic tricks for Barcuda. It's it's the weirdest thing you're ever gonna see. Just oh my gosh, I don't know how else to describe it. And this whole this whole thing is just really odd. He, Camp Kennedy does the art for this too. So yeah, I did at least art's that. great. <laughs> I'm in love with this lumpy hut art. I gotta admit. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, it's tough for me because the the weirdest Boba Fett story I know I have yet to discover. Right, I know it's out there. And it exists, and one day I'll find it, but I haven't yet. And that's why I'm excited to hear to hear Trevor's picks on this. I know it's going to blow me out of the water. It better blow me out of the water. Um, that's, why we're, that's why you're here, Trev. <laughs> I've got a couple. My first one is, is actually a book that I really recommend. It's like a horror Halloween-y uh, story. It's, it's from the Dark Horse Star Wars Adventures. So it's Boba Fett and the Ship of Fear. Mm. As I mentioned, I somehow didn't end up getting in the digital sale. But that one is, I think it's in our horror collection. It's Boba Fett dealing with the ugliest, craziest, meanest, uh, zombie-like creatures uh, on this. I think it's an abandoned Star Destroyer. I can't remember. It's been a long time since I've read it. The other one, I don't necessarily recommend that everybody read, but uh, Boba is, is pretty active in the Galaxy of Fear series. One of them, I kid you not, is called The Brain Spiders. <laughs> so... I'm just going to leave it at that. There you go. That's probably got to be one of the weirder ones, right? Yeah, there's, a, there's you know, in Legends, the amount of weird content. It, it, you know, when you gave me this task and I saw worst Boba story or uh, weirdest Boba story, I was like, oh my goodness, here we go. There's, there's so many good ones out there. You know, the fact that we've got Ship of Fear, with the Brain Spiders, uh, Boba Fett enlisting the help of a magician, you know, it's... Right. It's Legends, classic. Yeah, that magician one. I can't wait. I got I to gotta check that one out. And our final category for the day is the worst Boba Fett story, bless its heart. Now, uh, we have to say this one a little bit tongue-in-cheek because Freddie and I have pretty unanimous picks on this. Now, I'm sure there's something out there we have yet to discover, but like yeah. we celebrate the, the Star Wars stories at Utini. We're not going to dump on them. But I will say I read through the young reader Boba Fett stories from Elizabeth Hand and Terry Bisson. Um, no, there's five or six, I think there's six in the series, read some of these yeah. a couple years ago. And I had just read, you know, all the Jedi Apprentice, Jedi Quest, Last of the Jedi, all of those young readers. And I was like, oh, cool. There's a series about Boba too. It's only six. So it's not going to take as long. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> it was not of the same storytelling no. or emotional depth as Jude Watson's books, in my opinion. No, uh, I mean, Jude. Jude does such a great job at his stories, and she and we, a woman, or she. Sorry, <laughs> she she That's does. That's not great. her real name either. It's a pen name. <laughs> no, yeah, pen name. Uh, she does a great job with with all of her stories, and uh, honestly, the fight to survive, crossfire are are not. The, I mean, they're okay, right? They're depending on on where you are, are at, right? If you're if you're an advanced reader, you're you're not gonna really care for these books these young reader books i i can't really speak to them you know as a young reader how would it have read yeah uh, i've got friends that read them you know at 10 12 years old who love them yeah yeah so especially yeah, so, right about the time attack of the clones came out these came out between attack of the clones and, and revenge of the sith i've got a friend who's like man you gotta read those books they're great <laughs> so yeah. i think that's like the 12 year old nostalgia speaking Corey uh famously liked these when he was younger which is cool yeah, there's a lot of continuity errors in them that I couldn't really look past, right? I think in, in I forget, I'm not sure if it's, uh, I think it might have been Elizabeth Hand's book, I forget which one. She talks about him going to Coruscant for the very first time, when in book one, he was already there. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not like she contradicted something that's going to come later. It was her own stuff. That's funny. Yeah, it happens so, to the best of us. These, yeah. these young reader books, in my assessment, like I think the author is pretty well just like crank them out. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the kind of feeling that you get when you read it. it there's obviously like Leland Chi's not going to spend the time to look at the continuity of these, right? And we will, and we we do because you know that's we we don't get paid to do it either. So <laughs> we just love our our Utini books. Yeah, definitely. You know, they're for what it's worth. I'd say they're worth the read. They're yeah. only six they're okay. books, and and you got to get to the last one, which has Dirge. So that one's yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, we'd like to know what you think. Have you read any that we have yet to get to? Would love to hear your assessments on these. Um, the most important Boba Fett story, the best Boba Fett story, an underrated Boba Fett story, the weirdest and the worst, bless its heart. Now, before we're, before we're done with the show, I do want to ask Freddie, 
do you have any other honorable mentions that have not yet made the show? Uh, I, I really do like uh, Blood Ties and Boba Fett. Are, uh, there's, there's so many comics, right? There's, man, I couldn't even count. I was trying to look at them. There's Twin Engines of Destruction, which is an honorable mention. Uh, I mentioned Enemy of the Empire. There's, there's a few good ones there, too. Uh, but I think Blood Ties, uh, Boba Fett is Dead is a, a good honorable mention. I didn't mention that one here. It's a, I think it's a separate four issue yeah. Yeah. comic book set. Uh, and of course, uh, you've got Tales of the Bounty Hunters. Very good read. Little little section there. And oh, then, yeah, uh, we didn't talk about that, did we? Yeah. No, no. So a lot of, a lot of good... Look, I mean, if you're looking for Boba Fett content, comic books man you're, you're gonna find a lot of good stuff there and there's a lot of good stories and a lot of weird stories yeah and in the books themselves right you've got you've got the classics the tales series right you've got tales of, of jabba's uh palace and then um the bounty hunters i'm gonna plug one too and that is tales uh from the empire yep and this one has boba on the cover now i'm trying to find which one is the boba fett story in here we're gonna try to read this later this year and um tackle this and review it now what's fun is there is the longest story in here is by timothy zahn and it's called side trip now i'm going to post in the legends look back discord channel i don't have it pulled up right now <laughs> but in the essential readers companion there's art that was done originally you know specifically for the side trip story which is thrawn impersonating jodo cast impersonating boba fett <laughs> oh, great so it's thrawn in Boba Fett's armor. It's out there. It's official art. It exists. And it's incorporated into this. This It was originally published, I think, in the Adventure Journals. And then was recollected in Tales from the Empire. So I'm excited to get to that. That's, that's maybe the only Thrawn story I've never read. So looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Now, everybody, we are, of course, going to close out the show here. We want to know your picks, however. Uh, what did you love about Boba Fett as a character? What stories do you love? Um, and, and Freddie, we've got a new Boba Fett show coming out later this year. In in a minute or less, can you tell us like what's one thing you'd love to see in the show? I, I'd like to see some sort of development of how he became who he is, and how. Well, first of all, how the heck did he get out of that Sarlacc? What did he do? Oh, like a flashback? That'd be cool. Yeah, I'd like to see. And I know Star Wars really doesn't do flashbacks. I mean, they've got the Force back, right? So I'd like to see how they integrate, uh, you know, Boba Fett in the Clone Wars and the prequels how he got out of the, uh, out of the um, Sarlacc pit and basically his development. I want to see his development. But I, I feel like uh, we'll see. It's going to be interesting. I'm not sure if they're just going to, you know, whatever happened in the past is the past and we're just going to move forward kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, so it should be interesting what kind of I didn't know that I needed that until you said that. And I definitely want to <laughs> see the gauntlet coming up out of the Sarlacc pit. Like, yes. That should just be the opening frame of the show. Just yes. uh, the, he blasts out of the Sarlacc pit. That'd be cool. I'm going to say I want to see Boba Fett disintegrate an entire colony of Kowakian monkey lizards. <laughs> like I want to see him, like one of them comes up and sniffs him, and he's like, oh, what's up, little fella? And he pets it, and then it bites him on the finger, and then he just pulls out all of his guns, and it's just like, blah, 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 just blast them all to pieces. And disintegration. <laughs> that would be great. Looks like you're hunting for something, Freddie. You got one more yeah. thing to show off? No, I'm trying to find that picture. <laughs> With Boba Fett and, and Thrawn. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll throw it up in the Discord channel. Let's we'll just tease it. We'll, we'll throw it up and say, we talked about this coming, coming Thursday. So uh, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us here on Legends Look Back. Whew, this has been an episode a long time coming, Freddie. Finally yeah. did it. You excited that we finally did Boba Fett? I am. I, I, didn't, I, I felt like I had to prepare for it because he yeah, is my favorite character. very prepared. <laughs> i had to make sure that that i proved why i liked him so much right and so uh i personally long time coming glad we did it and i hope it's not the last time we talk about boba fett no there's no way we'll we'll, we'll cover some of these stories we'll do round table round tables on every single boba fett comic there ever was uh no commitments i probably can't do that there's a lot <laughs> But coming up next week, we are going to be doing an episode we've been planning for a while, trying to figure out the technology and how to make it work. We're going in good Grand Admiral Thrawn fashion. We're going to be admiring some art, we're going to be reviewing some Legends Z art books. Uh, for example, I've got Star Wars uh, panel to panel covering all of the uh, Dark Horse comics art. And so we're going to be analyzing 
and admiring some of the best legends art that ever was. You're going to have a, an art off, and then whoever loses gets assassinated by an ogre. Isn't that how it works, Freddie? Right in the back. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you are reading along with us and want to prepare for what we are going to be talking about in our next roundtable, tell them what we're going to be reading next, Freddie. Yeah, so we've got... Uh, check this out. Here's, our, here's my Legends Look Back calendar. Yeah, wow. Look at that. <laughs> You're, you can use a real, real paper and pencil. Yeah. Amazing. Old Shadows school. of the Empire. That's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am so excited. It's got everything. And that's a good Boba Fett story, too. The comic specifically covers oh, yeah. more of Boba's arc. How do we go through this whole episode and not talk about Boba and Shadows of the Empire? Figure, I figure it was going to be uh, mentioned during the episode anyway. At least Here it is. At Cosmic yeah. Force, right? Cosmic Force is probably going to cover it. So Yeah, we are. We're going to talk about that on Cosmic Force. You're welcome to join that episode, too, by the way. I should probably give you the date on that. Well, yeah, thank you, everybody, be... <laughs> for yeah. joining us for this episode of Legends Look Back. Thanks to our incredible patrons for your support. We love making the show, in case you can't tell. And we're glad that you're along for the ride. Special thank you to Cheryl Bell, Patrick Ortiz, Carl Sander on our Jedi High Council, Elizabeth Cloutier, Jason Mitchell, Sally Chris Iverson, and Freddie C. on our Alliance High Command for their amazing support. If you would like your thoughts around the show, you can email us. Legends look back at utini.com. You can send us a message in the Legends Look Back Discord channel. You can leave a comment on this episode on YouTube. You can find us on Twitter at Legends Look Back or me. I'm at Jared Q. Mays. Freddie? At Wake Up Freddie. Excellent. If you are looking to buy some of these books and want to help support the show, boy, did we give you a lot of books you could buy this episode. You can click on the Amazon link on the profile. Or, of course, if you want to let us know what is the best or the weirdest Boba Fett story or whatever, uh, you can click on a link there on the book profile and leave us a review and let us know what you think. Remember, everybody, he's no good to us dead. No, 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 that's not it. What is it? Remember, keep the Uchini fan code and be a force for positivity in the fandom. May the force be with you. <laughs>